So suddenly the newspapers think it's the greatest thing that ever happened. Money Park is uh, revitalized Michigan Avenue at that end. All these condo projects are now attributing their great success to Money Park. Um, two projects that um, were, were really important were the legacy at Millennium and the Heritage Millennium. They wouldn't have happened had not Money Park been announced. Heritage was, <coughs> was the first one that was built. And that firm then is almost finishing off now the legacy, even in this bad real estate market, it's 95% sold. And this building is a commercial building. They're turning the top of that commercial building into condo units too. So it's a, a mixed use building. Oh, so this, if, you, if it, the slide was white like it was supposed to be, you would see that uh, $1.4 billion is the economic impact of Money Park over a 10 year period on real estate residential property values. So, uh, and I just talked to the people who did the study, and they think that um, they were now, at, in retrospect, they think they were really light on that number. And it's much more significant than that. And, and, and for another 30,000, they'll, they'll upgrade their study. <laughs> so we have over 4 million visitors a year now, take part in all the free programming. And uh, these numbers show that uh, those are millions, so it's $2.6 million in tourism spending. <laughs> and um, job creation, there's a whole list of things. And then that's the 10-year impact of Millennium Park and total numbers. So even though the park was pricey and the press was critici criticized it, it is uh, a huge economic benefit for the city, not that it was intended to be. <laughs> And that's the side benefit. And, and you know, you could, you, we hired somebody to do the economic impact study, but I think it's probably right because of one independent uh, assessment. And that was done by Priceline.com. In uh, 2005, they, they uh, did a study of who, where people were going for summer months. And in 2005, uh, Money Park, which was open a year, was number 35th in the country in terms of where people wanted to go. In 2006, it was number one. More popular in terms of tourist destination, hotel bookings and aircraft, aircraft plane bookings than uh, Las Vegas and Central Park, New York. So how do we uh, fund uh, the operation of the park, which is about uh, seven and a half million a year? We have lots of security, custodial, landscape maintenance. It's, it's a very intensively maintained park compared to everything else in the city because there's so many people. So we use the revenues from the bus shelter advertising. Um, this is one of them. This is one that happens to be in front of the park. But all the ones from all over the city uh, are used and that advertising revenue is about seven and a half million. So, <laughs> <coughs> sorry. All the concerts are free. This is uh, world music. Uh, we have 4,000 fixed seats and we can do in about 7,000 on the lawn. Uh, there are 80 concerts that are free for the public, uh, anywhere from symphony, jazz, gospel, uh, world music in this case. Joffrey Ballet performs there. This is our resident conductor, um, a jazz series. Uh, this is the Joffrey Ballet performing on the stage. Uh, the Lyric Opera of Chicago performs one concert for free. Uh, the stars of the Lyric Opera. And you can see that's underwritten. They raise their own money. There's also uh, free programming for families. This is the Family Fun Festival. All during the summer, uh, families can come and, and we have uh, partners, uh, the museum partners, Art Institute, uh, the Science Museum. For two weeks, they'll take it over and, and program it with crafts and experiments. And they also have uh, live uh, kids' performances, too, and music and, and plays. And that goes on all summer, all day long. Uh, this is a rendering that shows the new addition to the Art Institute down here, uh, directly across from Frank Gehry. This was the rendering that Renzo Piano did. That building will open up in a few weeks. Uh, it's called the Modern Wing. And it was moved from an, uh, another location to be across from Millennium Park to take advantage of the park. 
And this is the view from the modern wing toward <laughs> the Gary Pavilion. There's also, uh, as a result of moving it over, they decided to do a bridge, uh, also designed by Renzo Piano, which is still under construction, uh, so they're rushing to finish it. Uh, but it will connect Millennium Park directly to an upper level sculpture terrace in the new addition, which will be free to the public, and then they hopefully will go a little further and pay admission to the museum. Uh, two projects coming up on that red square. We're doing two pavilions, uh, this one by UN Studio. They'll be there to celebrate the um, centennial of Daniel Burnham. UN Studio uh, is Ben Van Berkel. He's a, quite a famous architect from, from Holland. And at night, uh, there'll be LEDs that will, as people walk around, they'll change colors. And they focus on certain views toward Burnham buildings, those, those scoops that's under construction. This is another pavilion, temporary pavilion, by Zaha Hadid. And um, it will, it's made of uh, fabric and aluminum. We actually plan to auction this off uh, after um, next October when the exhibit comes down. And uh, they'll have a vi video capability, so we'll, they'll be showing uh, information about uh, uh, the plan of Chicago and the future of Chicago. Uh, if you're interested to find more about the park, you can go to MillenniumPark.org. We have a great website. Um, you can find more about all of the artists and architects and planners. And that's the end of my presentation. So I'm happy to take any uh, questions anyone may have. Yes. There seemed to be a portion of the um, park to the east towards the lake, and that looked like it was a couple of tennis courts and some of the park. Will that eventually be you know, It will, because actually, this uh, mining park is unique because um, it is a, a city owned park. It's the only one in Chicago that's a city owned park. And it's operated by the city, it's really a cultural venue. And uh, the park district doesn't have the expertise to program a park like that. So, but that place across from the park is where the new pr proposed children's museum is, is supposed to go, uh, part of it. it. It is also built over a garage. And unfortunately, the garage, or fortunately, the garage is, needs to be repaired. So they're going to strip that entire park off, including the, the uh, tennis courts. And they're entertaining. Um, going to show you the fireworks that we had at the end of the program. If this is the opening night. Anyway, they're going to uh, they're going to be doing um, a whole. They did an RFP. All the great landscape architects in the world have submitted, and I'll be on the selection team to decide who's going to get that. Fact. cost about 300000 and we want to do it every year now, but we don't have the money for it. <coughs> it was hard convincing these building owners to let us do this, but so I had to call them up and say, we'd like to shoot fireworks off your roof, and they said, no, I don't think so. I said, well, the mayor wants to shoot fireworks off your roof. Okay. 